Steve, good evening. Oop, that sound better? Yes. <laughs> Make it louder, too. How are you? Well, fine. Fine. Um, things are fine over here, and you've had a you, you've had a busy uh, a busy season at the end of this season. You yeah, it's still tearing now. <laughs> More with <laughs> non stand things, but we well, yeah. I'll save it yeah. for a few minutes from right. now. <laughs> I. Uh, I drove by your store on the uh, day before Thanksgiving. There was a line all the way around the block and <laughs> uh, for distributing the turkeys. You had a- What time had, was uh, that? Oh, it was, I'm going to guess around 11 o'clock, something like that. It right. was, I, I didn't see we had much of a line any time. Oh, okay. There, hey. Cars were directed to take a, Special channel to get right to, to yeah. get to the front door for pickup yeah. deliveries. Okay. Yeah. It moved through it quite slowly. As as yeah. The people that had to wait the longest were the one that came half an hour before we started serving. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, whenever I drive down Sudbury Road, I it, admire the uh, uh, the new uh, hay that you're growing for the cattle that you're going to have next year. Looks like a nice uh, lawn. Was, it? <laughs> it, it looks it looks beautiful. Think of how happy those cows will be. Let me ask you: When you get, will you get a new crop of cows that next spring? And, right. the, and how old are the cows when you get them? Oh, uh, around a year and a half. Okay. Emily, hello. Hello. Nice. Hi, and are they all different breeds? Are the cows all different breeds? Uh, they can be. They can be. And, and are, are and they're strictly for beef? There's no there's no right. dairy cows in there. Right. Okay. Yeah. We had we had dairy breeds three years ago, I think. Yeah because the beef weren't available, but we take what we can find. Okay. Hi there. Hi. Melissa, hello. I was just checking, uh, Liza's having technical difficulties, but she's- Oh my. Uh, <laughs> with her computer, but hopefully she'll be here in a minute. Cool. Steve, were you talking about the cows that graze um, alongside uh, Route 2? Right, yeah. I, I was asking about them. I forgot are they, are they so rent are they cows? What? I'm sorry. What? Are they like, are they rent to cows or do you own them? Oh, no. We, we buy them in, in the spring and package them in the fall. I see. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and are, they, are they all boys? Are the cows, are, are, are all of those boy cows? No, no, no not necessarily. Okay. We're, 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 we're not prejudiced. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Hi. 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 And Roseanne, hello? Yes, I'm right here. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hello. Here we go. Here we go. Hi. Well, Emily, it sounds like great. Eliza. Yeah, yeah, I know my, my video is not working. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tell her about the release. Yeah. I, I think I forgot whether the last meeting or not. Uh, <clears throat> Emily, uh, are you aware I found my ring? Oh, yes, oh, I ran oh, into you. You I, showed I, it to me. But nobody I did. was overjoyed. <laughs> Oh, that's great. From Ag Day? Good. Yeah. How did that happen? It ended up getting dumped back into a bin of potatoes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. Oh, that, is awesome. that is amazing. That's wild. I, I was kind of hoping something like that would happen to a pair of glasses <laughs> I left on a pallet at Hutchins Farm. 
No, we never found and it. They, and, they, and they just never surfaced. But I must say, your story from start to finish, Steve, the <laughs> ring, and then the long wait in between oh, wow. and finding really it much. and <laughs> finding it where you did. And then I just, really wondered if it came off the day before the market when I was working wow. tilling the field, the pasture field there that the, we were just talking about. It was some yep. very rough ground and mm. my uh, my left finger now is one of the shorter ones and it doesn't get so much use and it's shriveled up so the the ring was very loose on that where it's very mm -hmm. tight on my other hand. Uh -huh. And I thought it might have fallen off when I was going over some very rough ground there. Mm -hmm. Turned up and it landed in the bin of potatoes and they got them <laughs> dumped back into the pallet. Uh -huh. Well, when you do the second edition of your History of Feral Farm, I hope this story <laughs> will, yeah. will be included. Well, we just did a second printing, but not a second edition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Anybody else is coming? I'm sorry, I don't have my video, guys. This is yeah. a little awkward. <laughs> can you can you see us? I can see you. You just can't see me. Oh. <laughs> is, your, like, is your camera um obscured because you've put tape on it? On the no, it's, I I don't know what's going on. My computer is real old. Like it's mm -hmm. from 2010, I think. I, it's just yeah. the video, but yeah, the, at least the audio is yeah. working. Before I couldn't you're, even thought. You're older than that. <laughs> it's just the computer. Should we call the meeting to order? Do you want me to do it or do you want, do you want to do it, Melissa? Um, whatever you'd like. <laughs> I, um, I can do it. <laughs> do you feel weird because we can't see you? I feel a little weird because you can't see me. Okay. <laughs> I'll I'll do it. Thank All right. You. Yep. So we'll call to order. Um, we're reviewing the minutes first. So, um, these are the November minutes. Wow, we're really on top of them. Um, do folks have edits? My name's spelled wrong. <laughs> Yes, oh. it is. Yes, it is. Oh, yes, right. That, that That's not two Fs. It should be an RF. Yes, all right. Mm -hmm. And it won't happen again. <laughs> <laughs> this is skipping a ways down, but um, in where I was asking about if we need to pay the speaker, was Noelle from New Entry paid a fee when she spoke? Mm -hmm. Not uh, he. Uh, she. she. Oh. Oh, so what's that correction? The, the, it's just she. Noelle from. It's not she New Entry. Hi, Dan. Hi, everyone. Hi. Does Liza have problems with her screen, her uh, camera? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, I just feel real awkward. I can see all you guys. You just can't see. <laughs> Where the cat? <laughs> the, cat's, the cat's asleep. I can't blame her. <laughs> <laughs> Any other edits for the um, November minutes? Looks good. I move they be uh, approved as corrected. Great. I'll second it. Lengthy. Perfect. Great. All right. Um, any news about Concord Farms and Farmers? Yes, I want to let everyone know that Mr. Rotundo is going to be having a 90th birthday, wow. December 23rd, and I'm sure he would appreciate a card or a drop by during that week. 
I'm okay. sorry, I couldn't hear that very well. What was that? Mr. Rotunda's birthday is December 23rd. Oh. And he's 90. Ah. Wow. Mr. Rotundo. <clears throat> he beats you, Steve. That was December 23rd? Yes. Okay. Wow. How's he doing? He's he's putting along. He's, mm -hmm. he's trying to recover from this horrible summer. <laughs> mm. What happened? He basically got nothing. He said his root cellar is empty. <laughs> wow. Mm. Is everybody going to the conference next week? Yes, I was going to inquire about that. The what? The New England uh, Fruit and Vegetable Conference is next week. I'm going. I'm nice. going. Some of our crew is going. Oh, good. Brian's yeah. going. Well. Yeah, all of our crew is going more or less some of the time. Yeah, we're, we're taking three people. <laughs> What days are is it on? Is it on the weekend or? No, it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Huh. Sorry, is, the England, is the New England what conference? New, the England, New England. Oh, go ahead. Well, New England Vegetable and Fruit Growers. Mm -hmm. It's a, a biennial conference held in Manchester. <clears throat> Three day affair and. It actually, this is, I think, the third year between rather than the second because of COVID. Uh, we had to skip the last one. Mm -hmm. But there are three, at least three concurrent sessions going all the time for three days. And a nice trade show with a lot of toys to buy and uh, interesting things and okay. uh, very educational. And it's, it'll be in Manchester, Massachusetts. No, 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 New Hampshire. New Hampshire, okay. Right. It's the only conference I enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, Is do you ever you speak have... at it? Pardon? Do you ever speak at it? I have before. I'm not this year. Mm -hmm. Are you going through all, for all three days, or? Yeah, I am. I think Brian will be there all three days too. I think I'm just there too. So is that is that where you find new varieties of, say, potatoes or what well, the new things that show up in your stand? Right. Do they come thanks to the this conference? Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, there are all the seed companies present their new varieties and the research from the universities on which ones are working and so on, which are the uh, strongest ones. Um, different methods of uh, controlling pests and so on. There's uh, one session on no-till a discussion. Uh, far, I think that's a farmer to farmer thing for the most part. <clears throat> and we'll get into that more later as we get into our uh, uh, projected program. But um, there are a lot of farmer to farmer sessions now. That seems to be a popular venue where different farmers uh, tell their experiences with different procedures and uh, very interesting. What do you like, Liza? I, I like it because you always learn something. <laughs> it might right. it might not be what you thought you were going to learn, but you learned something at that conference. <laughs> it, it both both organic, organic and conventional yeah. methods. Yeah, and it's gotten more. There's, I mean, I think when I know my dad presented there like 30 years ago and there wasn't much organic, but now there's a fair amount. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's always interesting because it's like tiny picture stuff. Like you'll go to one session that's all about like hand tools 
And then you go to another session that's talking about like big policy stuff that's happening, like with food safety regulations or something. So it's always, I feel like I always learn something. Yeah. But three days is pretty long, I'll be honest. <laughs> By the end of it, I'm kind of losing it. <laughs> Have you ever gone, Melissa? Oh yeah, we, we usually go every year. We're not going this year, but yeah, I've been going since since I started farming, like definitely since from before there were very many organic workshops and we'd sit in on like, you know, commercial strawberry production. And it was like great to hear just like the variety of things that people do and to get like the idea of like what the big folks did and it would give us ideas for our farm and stuff, even if it didn't like seem totally relevant. Yeah, yeah, I really like it. And this happen next week. It's next week. Next week. Yeah, I feel like even if it's like you sit in a session that, like, you none of it applies to you, it's still interesting. Yeah. I've gone to the NOFA one, but it seemed, you know, it's sort of a lot of repeat. It seems so. It'd be interesting to try a different different one. Yeah, I find the NOFA one is hard because it's also a lot of homesteaders. The NOFA one, there's not yeah. really commercial growers. Yeah. yeah, you can you can find the program to this online if you just uh, Google New England vegetable and berry growers. And the conference comes right up with a program in it, and you can see what the sessions are. Great, sounds it's, good. It's pretty, it's pretty big, which is always fun yeah. too. There's just a real diversity of people there. Mm -hmm. Well, over a week ago, I heard they had seven seven hundred and fifty registered already. Wow. Maybe get the early bird discount. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so everything's pretty quiet at everybody's farms now. We're, no, we, yeah, we're, we, we're yeah, we're just uh, they set the light pole today to run the electricity into our well down in Sudbury Road. Oh, congratulations tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So that's coming along. It's a project like everything else. And our uh, H2A housing is progressing well. They uh, started putting the siding on today, oh. the vinyl siding. Mm -hmm. And the plumber has been working and electricians coming in. And we, uh, OSHA requires a second egress from the sleeping quarters and Sudbury says the windows that are open wide are fine and OSHA likes a ladder and Sudbury doesn't like ladders. So we've been going through that business. Crazy. How many people will it house? Uh, it could house 12. Uh, we don't plan to put that many in it now, but it's built so it could. We started, we broke ground on our new machinery shed. Oh, that's yeah. exciting. That's very exciting. Okay. I honestly never thought it would happen, but they started pouring the footings. What what type of building is it? Is it a, a pole <laughs> building or? A... Yeah, it's like a pole barn. It's going to have like, it's partially built into the hill a little bit. So there's going to be a little bit that's the side is going to be a little bit of foundation, but mostly it's, it's a pole barn. But it's very exciting. And yeah. Brian, Brian and Ted and uh, Dan have been also putting up our new greenhouse, which is also thrilling. Oh. <laughs> I know. So we are ready to no longer be severely undersized for our greenhouse. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty soon you'll be able to work all year. You won't have to take the winter off. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Everybody keeps asking, oh, does that mean you're going to grow year round? No. <laughs> <laughs> But very exciting. We'll be like, we're so excited to have a little more space in the spring. So, um, so that's our news. So that, yeah, everybody's still working though. <laughs> Should we go on to um, the spring forum discussion? Sure. Okay. Um, 
speaker ideas and logistics. Um, the logistical thing I have is I did get the form from um, the Council on Aging at Harvey Wheeler is who rents out the space and it is free for town committees and April is wide open. So pretty much any night, if we do it now, we could have. There is a group that tends to book every Thursday night, but she said they hadn't yet and also that they were flexible. So um, I thought if we wanted to do it a different night, it might be nice of us to leave them the Thursday night, but she, the woman I talked to didn't seem like that worried, but really any day is available. One catch is that they do like a town employee to fill out the paperwork, not a committee member. I think they have a, it sounded like they have a lot of problems with people saying they're a town committee and they're not. <laughs> um, so I was thinking once we had the details, maybe I could email it to our liaison and see if, I don't know. It didn't even seem like you signed it though. You really just filled it out, but maybe I could email it to him to see if he would put his name on it on our behalf. Yeah, <clears throat> so if it's a town employee, probably uh, Delia would do it because we're under the oh. natural resources. That's a great idea. That'd probably be even easier. Yeah. Okay, so we can do that. But um, first we have to figure out what we're doing and and when we want to do it. Uh, Steve, did you have any? Well, I made contact with the, the Lisa McKeegan and she hadn't got back to me. I okay. uh, left a message for her this morning mm -hmm. and she didn't respond today, but she will be one of the presenters at the conference and we'll have a chance to visit there. Okay. But I think one of her potential people is the same one that I think you uh, had been talking to from the uh, American Farmlands Trust. Okay. Yeah, I didn't try to contact her yet. I just like that was the name I looked up from that meeting. So that would be good if we had a Another thought would be if we don't get anybody to come in to have our own panel from our own members uh, like they're doing at the uh, conference next week. That's one of the sessions that would be interesting to sit in on. I plan to do it. Well, that would be a good, great, because then you'd find out stuff that would, so we could really work out the details. I don't no, know if you're interested or not, but Carl is practicing no-till at Small Farm, and he would probably be willing to be on a panel. Okay. Steve, do you think we should wait to hear back from Lisa or should I try looking up the contact info for that woman? Well, I think we, you could look it up or we could uh, wait a week until after the conference and see what we find from that. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Um, Okay, and then we were going to wait to figure out timing basically on when speakers were available, I think. Perhaps we should just pick like two dates and ask them if they have a preference or whatever. Like say maybe the first Thursday in April and the second Thursday in April. Yeah, maybe we should pick one that isn't a Thursday in case that group ends up reserving it before we do. Okay, so say Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. Wait, should, should we say the first week in April sometime? Yeah. Sure, we could do that. Sounds good. Yeah, so the first week is third to the seventh. Do schools here have April vacation? I assume it would be later if they did. I think it's later though. I think yeah. it's the week of the 19th. Yeah, it's Patriot's Day week. Got it. Okay, yeah, so let's aim for maybe the first week of April. So that, I'm just looking at the calendar mm -hmm. and that first week in yeah. April 
has Passover and Good Friday, but Thursday, I will, but, but town meeting or town election is the week before. What day is Passover? Passover starts April 5th, according to this. Oh, so we probably want to do it the next week. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, Easter will be the ninth. Mm -hmm. So, so like that sort of that that week leads up to Easter. Yeah. So like maybe after Easter, like the Wednesday or Thursday, the twelfth or thirteenth. Mm -hmm. Probably a better target. Yeah. Oh, good call, Emily. That that would be better. Yeah. Yeah, that does seem that stuff is all very early. That seems like okay. Um, so we think the next, well, let's see, maybe. We can't do reply all, but can Steve, can we email about, like, I'm just thinking that the January meeting is going to be a ways okay. after. So if we like wait a week to hear back from, um, to like investigate at the conference and stuff, right. um, how could we arrange like actually reaching out to people once we, um, committee or like make a, how does that work? Can we appoint somebody in charge of that? <laughs> I think that someone could email everyone. We just can't reply all. Yeah. So like if, if Steve, if you talk to Lisa at the conference and like figure something out, you could email everybody. And then well, can, I, can I just email you? Or Emily volunteered yeah. to help. No, I think, no, I think she was just saying that you can. <laughs> So you can email everybody, but we can't reply all. So we'd have to reply individually to you. Um, it like sounds I, like I, you would like to pass it on to someone. Oh, yeah, that would be fine. Yeah. That would Melissa? be Melissa? Yeah, Steve, you could just email Liza and I if you want to, and we could figure out getting in touch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. And then we could, we probably don't have to finalize anything till the meeting in January, but that way we can divide up like emailing people to see if they're available. Yeah, it's about time to Yeah. nail down a plan then. Right, right. Okay. That's what we'll do. Um, should we move on to the paper bag update? Do we have, yeah. do we have a direction for this uh, forum that we really <laughs> nail down what we're talking about? I thought we decided it was going to be like tillage pretty broadly, but like including no till. Yeah. So well, the idea was you. that we could get someone who's like an expert on tillage in general, and then have speakers for um, folks who have been trying out no-till, gaining ground, and market salt box have agreed to speak. And then we could have um, Steve um, talking about tillage practices as well, like just to have a, yeah. So we had, that was our general plan but we were waiting to find someone who was more of like a soil expert who could kind of pull it all together ideally so what does this mean to joe rogers as a gardener <laughs> oh, wait, he's the guy at, who now has the small farm no oh, joe's <laughs> Joe right here no, I just mean, what does this mean to anyone who has a garden plot over at Alcott, you know? Oh, Joe, I'm sorry. 
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think gardeners have been not curious about, uh, like they hear the word no-till a lot, like they don't use heavy equipment, but it is different um, practices in terms of how much you disturb the soil or not. And there are like benefits and um, harder things about switching to no-till. It's kind of like a buzzword now. So we thought that, and people have been asking us about it. Um, so we could, like explain really what tillage is and sort of some of the like reasons why people do till and then why there is interest in no till now and yeah at the community garden where at the community garden where I have a plot um I guess it was two or three years ago there was a NOFA workshop of no-till at Gaining Ground. And um, Michelle, who's one of the coordinators at the Harvey Wheeler Community Garden and I were there. And we talked afterwards about maybe having a no-till strip at the community garden, which has not yet materialized and would, and, and you know, would create some challenges but uh but i but i i think you're right there that it's it it seems very current a discussion of no-till and and so i think there would be gardeners interested and that might result in you know further further exploration at the community garden level well, our title should be something like till or no till. That is the question. <laughs> well, I don't think anybody's deciding that people shouldn't till. I think it's sort of, well, I guess that would be part of your question. But... <laughs> I think it's part of it is like presenting it pretty balanced so that it's like really yeah. talking about, because there are, there are disadvantages to no till too, but like it really depends on your individual situation. But I think I do think a lot of people know the buzzword, but they do not know what it means. So it would be no. great to have that discussion. And also, they don't even know what tillage means. So right. that that's be. why Happy's uh, catchy title is going to really pull them in. It sound like it might be simple, and there's going to be an answer, and then there never is. <laughs> no, that might be a good title to work on. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we'll we'll try to get that like really nailed down next meeting. Um, the town paper bag charge update. Uh, Liza, do you want to discuss that? Sure. So we had talked about I don't know six months ago about writing this letter to the health department to get kind of ahead of whatever they decide to how they decide to implement the bag charge when it comes out. So I finally talked to my friend who's a lawyer just to get a couple of things clearer. Uh, basically, there isn't a statewide um, mandate about receipts, which was really my question. Like you don't, you, if a customer asks, you are required to provide an itemized receipt, but that could be a handwritten one on a piece of paper. It is not required to like automatically be spit out. Um, and there's, there is no statewide law or policy on it, basically. Um, cause I was a little bit worried that like, oh no, what if we mention that like, we don't, it would be difficult for some of us to put a bag charge fee on our receipts. And then we're opening ourselves up to like, oh, actually you need to have a, you know, uh, we're not currently following stuff, but there isn't anything to follow. So it's fine. Um, I also, by the way, did talk to him about, um, I know somebody brought up like, do you, when you have a register, like having a customer facing display. There is no rule about that. It's as long as you are not hiding the like charge from the person. Like you don't have it below your desk and are running their card <laughs> underneath so they can't see the total. If you have an iPad and are showing them the total, that totally follows the policy. The weights and measures guy told us it didn't. Yes, he is incorrect. <laughs> well, what That's not a good term. As we had figured. <laughs> yeah. Well, what did the weights and measures guy say? 
he told us that our iPad didn't count as a like valid point of sale <laughs> system because it didn't have an automatically outward facing screen for the customer even though it's just on the table and like you can show them he said that like they had to see it on a screen the whole time so that is there. he's wrong he's wrong yep. which we had kind of figured because we couldn't find anything yeah. on the laws about that uh the only law on the books for massachusetts statewide is that you can't basically hide the total from them like they have to be able to see this is your total this is what i'm charging you and here it is on the machine so you can't have your like credit card machine hidden in the back and you go take their card in the back of the room. like yeah, that's not allowed <laughs> but if it's an ipad and you're literally like flipping it around so they can see it you're all good yeah so he he it wasn't like something under his jurisdiction he was just like telling, telling us that we could get in trouble if a customer complained about it but you can't so don't worry <laughs> So what is, what is the charge? So the, charge the, ba so the bag charge, okay, so the update on the bag charge is um, it still has to, it passed at town meeting back in April. It's a 10 cent charge for using a paper bag or providing a paper bag to a customer at the point of sale. Um, so this doesn't apply to like, if they were to put potatoes in a bag on their own, like at your store, that doesn't count. That's like, that's like a produce bag. But if the end of like when you're checking them out and you're putting stuff into a paper bag, then that's what the, what a ten cent charge per bag would be added to. Um, See, a lot of people, sorry, a lot of people take baskets and they fill the basket and then they come up and then we either give them a bag or put stuff in the little bags and then sometimes big bags though. So if the if you were putting it all into a bag for them at the end, that would that bag would be subject to that charge. Um, if they put it themselves into a paper bag, is that okay? I think you could probably argue that then that was a produce bag, but because like this with our CSA, like when people forget to bring their CSA bags, they take a paper bag to put their veggies in, and that would just be. I think that would count really as cumbersome to charge them ten cents every time. No, I mean, I think it really depends too how the Concord Health Department decides to implement it because yeah. it's up to their, uh, <laughs> like they have the leeway to change it or implement it as they see fit. Um, One other question that I had was for like EBT cards because you can't charge, like an EBT card cannot be charged for a paper bag. Correct. Correct. But like that feels really bad to like charge someone with an EBT card for a bag. Yeah. And like, we have people who are disabled who come to the farm stand that we fill the bags for them and bring it to their car who are paying with EBT. Like, yeah, you want to be like, here, I'm sorry. Now I need 11 cents. Yeah, that feels <laughs> awful. <laughs> yes. Um, so the the so it has it passed town meeting, but it hasn't it has to go to the state for approval and then come back. So it's going to take a while for that to happen. Is the last I heard from the town manager's office. Um, so this is like sort of just like how do we want to get ahead of this a little bit with the health department? I mean, my experience with this has been that Cambridge was the first sort of city to pass it around here, and that was quite a while ago. But we went through a lot of hiccups when that first came out at the farmers market. Um, because of the receipt issue and because of the sales tax issue. If you, because, you know, we at the farmer's market, everything there is not, or doesn't have sales tax on it. And all of a sudden you have a small 10 cent charge every single time that then is, you have to charge sales tax on. So it's actually not 10 cents, it's 11 cents. Or if you decide to eat the one cent, <laughs> it could be 10 cents, but then it's nine cents you keep and one cent still has to be reported to the state. Um, that became a real problem. The, the Cambridge Health Department decided then that if the paper bag didn't have a handle on it, then it didn't count, the bag charge didn't apply. And this was a way to like get around for farmer's markets um, that then we didn't have to deal with it. Uh, it took a while to get to that point, but then once Cambridge did that, then like Somerville adopted the same policy and the, several other towns have too, of basically like the paper bag is a handled paper bag. And then other than that, we're not gonna care. Um, well, if the bag charge was eight, eight cents, I think one bag wouldn't qualify for a tax, but if they got two bags, it would. 
<laughs> yeah, because the percentage is so tiny. <laughs> right. <laughs> what and the money for the charge does that go to us or does that go to yeah. the state or no the, the char you get to keep the 10 cents it's supposed to be like oh the vendor gets to keep it which is you know inconsequential i would say to most like 10 right. cents ever but from for me it was more the problematic of you have to then keep track of the number of bags you sold because you're going to have to report t sales tax on all of them when in most cases like in some cases, there's, like, there's small farms that are not even, they don't even have a sales tax account because they don't need one. Um, do, we know what, do we know what's driving this 10 cent charge? Yeah, they want to reduce bags. They want to reduce bags. So okay. They want people to bring a reusable bag. Uh, we should mount a campaign to encourage people to bring their bags with them a little yeah. bit more. So anyway. this isn't an issue for us. To our stand, most people bring paid their own bags lately. In fact, there are a lot of people act really embarrassed if they forgot their bag. Oh yes, yes. But there's always there's always people who don't bring their like it's yeah. You, yeah. you know, like right. Like we'd still need a receipt system for the people that don't bring them, even if it's like reduced. Yeah, even if it's one person, you still are you still have to legally do this. Yeah. I I think uh, um Liza, like I, I feel like the EBT question for yeah. the Board of Health is important. Mm hmm Because that's another like issue of like related yeah. to the sales tax. Like most of us are selling things that are not yeah. subject to sales tax and that are are eligible to be purchased with like an EBT card and this changes that. Yeah. So I guess my question is, for the, I have multiple questions here. Do we still think that writing a friendly letter, I'm, I, hopefully this was friendly, <laughs> friendly letter to the Concord Board of Health is the best approach to this? And uh, two, besides the things I have listed here, like we should include something about EBT and potentially the impact of that. Um, is there other things that should be in this? I, I like I I think clarification on like if a customer is filling the bag like, like grabs a bag and fills it themselves like this is I don't know if anyone else has this like but yeah. for our CSA that's a like, I'm, yeah I think forget their bags the way the the way the article is written it would seem that if this customer is filling it it is not a problem um, okay. the way they they were the way they wrote it because basically it was meant to exempt like produce bags like it was meant to like you put your own head of lettuce in that bag, that doesn't count, right? Um, the, the way the Cambridge Health Department also interpreted it was uh, if the produce is directly going into a bag, doesn't matter if you put it in there or not, it still counts as a produce bag. I think that would be a little, maybe we wanna clarify that with Concord Department, how they feel about that. But that did mean that like, if it didn't matter, matter if I put it in the bag or the customer put it in the bag, as long as the produce was naked and it went into a bag. So you didn't have a bag of produce going into another bag. It was fine. <laughs> um, but that might be a point of clarification that we should make. Mm -hmm. part, of, part of it is, I, I don't know how much the health department has actually thought about any of this. <laughs> I, I think the EBT that's a good point though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the other time that we use bags that our customers don't even love but they're just so much less expensive than a box is like if people pre-order stuff we put it in a bag and label it with their name like paper bags are way less expensive and less environmentally impactful than like a wax box or something from an order be tricky so like and i will say that i did put in here that some farm business, like I sort of like offered as so some people is what cities and towns have dealt with this issue is by allowing farmers markets and small farm stands to be excluded. Well, I don't actually know of anybody who excluded a farm stand, but farmers markets. <laughs> yeah. So it's very interesting that this becomes part of the health department. What does this have to do with the health department? I mean, nothing. I think that's the other thing is it's just, they're the ones who got sort of almost saddled with this. Yeah. I don't. I actually don't know how much the health department has even thought about this because it's not coming back to them yet. Um, 
which is partially why I sort of want to get out ahead of it a little bit so that they are aware of some of the issues before they try to implement it. And then we're like, hey, by the way, that's problematic. Yeah, yeah I'm sure they're not um, that excited about having another thing to implement. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the last chair meeting, like she was like, we have so much stuff that comes under our like they're, you know, there's still COVID going on. They're like worried about that, but then they have to like regulate these other things. Yeah. I mean, I know that for Cambridge, they were sort of like pretty, I don't know if irritated is the right word, but like couldn't believe that really we have to think about this too, you know? Well, thanks for doing all this work on it, Liza. Yeah. Thanks. Well, aside from bringing up the EBD, what did everybody else think of my letter? Is this the right tone? Like I'm not the best writer, so. Oh, I, I, I thought it fit good. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. So how about for next time I put in some wordage about like make the point about EBT um, right. and maybe just point out some clarification stuff that might be unique to farms about like bagging um, and put those things in there and then we can look at it again next time. I think also what Melissa said about like if people place orders and oh, like- yeah, I'll online yeah or yeah. the only other thing i would say that could strengthen the letter is if we um if we put the names of the, like the towns that you know of that did those exemptions like i feel like at the concord town meeting they're always saying like cambridge did yeah. this oh, like, so I can, yeah uh, yeah just like yeah, putting cambridge, the doesn't, cambridge doesn't have many farms Yes, no, but they have a lot of farmers markets. <laughs> they have like one every single day of the week. Do they know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can put in some of that stuff. I mean, some of it is, some of it, I don't know exactly how they've implemented in their town, but it's, I'm assuming it's similar because of their picturage. Like a lot of them have like, this is a bag and it shows a bag with a handle. And I go, oh, <laughs> you know, I know Cambridge for sure because we deal with them. So. Gotcha. In Somerville, so. Yeah. Well, yeah, if it's too hard to figure out their specifics, we don't have to. I just no, I think, I think it's great because I we can specifically cite Cambridge and how they deal with it. Um, so I think that's great. And I'm sure they would, Cambridge is the first one that did this. So I do think they're the model for everybody else. Yeah. I hate to say that, but Concord does seem to follow Cambridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the public the, of Cambridge. <laughs> I have to say the um, Cambridge health inspector for the farmer's markets is the most lovely person ever. She is so reasonable and great. Mm -hmm. She's been there forever. <laughs> nice. Can't say the same thing about summer ball. <laughs> <laughs> Cambridge, however, she's, she's wonderful. Um, thank you. Okay, so guys, I will redraft and come back next month with this. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Does anyone have any other business for us? Oh, do you want to talk about the town report thing? Oh, I have other business. Yes. Thank you, Liza. <laughs> um, yes, the town. Let me open it up. Um, emailed us about the annual report. Um, the town reports are due Friday, January 21st at 4 p.m. Um, and I was gonna look up and find, I didn't, our one from last year. Um, but we have, yeah, so we have a report we need to write as well as they always offer uh, photo submission, which I thought um, we have such good ones from Ag Day this year. Liza, you're here. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> this is so exciting. Just turn on. Nice. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I think that we submitted one from Ag Day last year too, but um, we could definitely get together a picture to be included. Yeah, I have some photos from Ag Day. Yeah, yeah, we have some good ones from this time. So, um. oh, I do have another thought I wanted to put into general okay. business. Uh, talking, of course, about the uh, 25th anniversary celebration. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, when we think about the Minuteman being with his plow, I think there's a place that the agriculture should be represented there. And I don't know that we want to try to take on some project or float or some idea or not. Yeah, I think they're supposed to have picked the theme, I think. I, I think we have a meeting next week by like subcommittee. So I think they're trying to involve everybody they can mm -hmm. around whatever the theme ends up to be. <laughs> yeah. But well, I think Henry, Henry Dane is in charge. Oh. He's our liaison, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh I, I think there's there's an executive committee and a with tons of people on. You know, the license on a committee, right? What committee are you on? Yeah, outreach. I'm supposed to be outreach. convincing you all to do a thing. <laughs> you're, you're, you're all reaching us for ideas, right? I am. That's my job. <laughs> a hay cart with a tractor. But I do I think, think I think we should we we should definitely talk about doing something or being involved in some way. Um, I mean, I I don't know. I don't, I don't know too much yet. Like they're supposed to pick the theme. They're still working some stuff out. Um, right. But I do think they want to, you know, they've talked about community dinners. They've talked about, you know, doing something like about a garden somewhere. I think that's kind of getting shot down because nobody wants to maintain a garden anywhere, um, including the garden clubs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I do think, um, you know, I, we were talking about a float in the parade or being somehow involved in the parade. Um, but I do think some sort of outreach thing would be lovely. I know they've even talked about, is there like speakers that like maybe different organizations would be able to sort of get and have um, have events going on that year or the year before that are just like related to this and have like a master calendar where they're all on there. Um, so there's lots of different ways we potentially could engage with it. But yeah, I think we should do something. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have a nice 24 foot old army wagon that it was a missile carrier, so it rides like a Cadillac. That, uh, that would be available for a float if anybody came up with some ideas and energy. All right. You got the new truck, Melissa. Pardon? <laughs> Our new, very old truck. I don't know. That's very ambitious to think it's going to make it to 2025. <laughs> I think it will take it one year at a time. One day at a time? One month yeah. at a time? <laughs> yeah. I think our mechanic's quote was, where, he said, where did you get this? Where do you get these trucks? He goes, I guess it's a little better than the last one. <laughs> <laughs> what year was it? Slight improvement. Uh, it's a 2000, but it's got 230,000 miles on it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> That's not bad for 2000. <laughs> and we got it at a salvage yard. So most things are <laughs> replacement parts. I just went and looked at some trucks yesterday because we're, we're now thinking to think about replacing one of ours. And I was a little horrified <laughs> what's out there. Where are they expensive too? They're expensive and they're rough. <laughs> well, if you don't mind rough and you would like not so expensive, JP Carroll <laughs> in Lexington. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I did think about that. I, I talked to Kevin at Kevin's Automotive. He's like, he I showed him some pictures of what I looked at and he was like, I'm getting you a truck. I can't deal with this. I have to find one for you. <laughs> you don't want to fix this. <laughs> So I, like, having I, I bought two trucks uh, about three years ago. They were a couple of years old before the prices went up. We got a good deal on these Chevy trucks. They had a couple of years on them on the lease and beautiful. But they have an automatic locking device so that you can't open the door from the inside if the engine's on. And the guys trying it. And they keep breaking the door handles off. And it's all an electronic program. Oh my God. Jesus. 
And then one of them, the uh, oil sensor light wasn't working and cost us $600 to put a new sensor in because they had to hunt to find the engine. I mean, they're crazy now. Yeah. That's the problem. I like, you know, even finding like an older truck, I was like disappointed. I was like, oh no, this one has automatic windows, you know, power windows. I'd much rather have it have a roll up. <laughs> I can fix <think> that. <laughs> Anyway, um, I need to amend what I said about, and I know no one cared, but about the annual town report because it's <laughs> due. Actually, I was looking at the 2021. 2022 is due January 13th, so that just means it might be quite close to when our next meeting is for review. Um. I I don't mind writing a draft, but I do want like input and things. So maybe we could do the thing where I send it out to everybody, but people don't reply all, but people could reply with additions right. or edits. Yeah. But then maybe our January meeting will be right before it's due. Wouldn't it be the- Both, I think. That'll be the day before. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, so we'll aim to have it pretty much already ready, but I guess we could like just vote on it there and then submit it in the morning. Okay. You can think of it as a Christmas card. Yeah. Okay. It is a permanent record of important events for history. So we'll complain about the drought a lot. And <laughs> it's right the opposite of what you wrote last year. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, just reverse that. <laughs> well, yeah. The drought was the best disease prevention we've had. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. And the worst uh, weed uh, situation. Mm -hmm. The weeds love the dry, hot weather. Yep. Yeah. Well, we had another good ag day. That's true. Yeah. We mainly, yeah, we've got another good ag day to talk about. And Steve's um, finally got a, got his well in. So. Right. <laughs> it may have taken all, all year or all summer <laughs> and fall. Yeah. Well, part of it was just waiting for the pump and stuff that the. Uh, several months to wait for a pump mm -hmm. and the control and then we had to get the light department out and they they finally set the pole this morning in a few minutes and supposed to run the wires in tomorrow but they had to put new transformers out to run the pump and it took a while to figure out which transformers they needed to go with this particular pump mm -hmm. All gets involved. <laughs> now, are you going to have a trough for the cows there? Yeah, I haven't decided whether to put in a tub and a float or just a water bowl. Hmm. All right. Is there any other business? Um, we'll make sure to put some of those things on the agenda next time. Like if we're gonna have more info about the 2025, we could put that on and we'll finalize about the spring forum and we'll vote on the um, town report. Are we at public comment yet? Sure, yeah. <laughs> Even though I feel so free to oh, chime in. In, in the middle of the meeting, but I I did hear I attended um, a meeting of the Historic Issues Committee, and actually they were talking a lot about that 2025 celebration. Um, also mentioned that on January 13th, the um, Village University, which is connected with the community ed. Um, is putting on a panel of about 
conquered agricultural history. And it sounded to me as if Steve and Barrett's Mill and Saltbox will be speaking as well as Margie Brown from the, from the park. People were really excited. They were looking forward to it. And I, and I was too, of course. So I'm not telling you anything you don't know, I trust, but I, it, it's great. And, and, and it strikes me that it would be as good in 2025 as it will be in 2023. I mean, you know, just the farmer roundtable sort of thing for history. <laughs> cool. Is it the topic history? It's like five. That, that's my understanding. Yes. I'm so, not speaking about history. <laughs> so, I for example, Margie's going to be talking about indigenous, the farming of indigenous peoples. And then um, I'm not sure who picks up with colonial. Uh, but then bit by bit, you know, then centuries get covered until we come to today. Do you think she would be a good person to have on our tillage panel to talk about historic tillage? <laughs> yeah, that could be. The person, I was just looking at the email, the person who is supposed to be, I think, speaking about farming from 1840 to 1880 is Richard Smith. Oh, yes, Richard Smith. He's the um, Henry David Thoreau reenactor. Uh. <laughs> An actor, maybe not reenactor. <laughs> gotcha. Dan, had you had your hand up too at that time? All right. I thought we were saying goodbye. Oh, you were just waving because Emily. I saw had Emily you. put up her hand. <laughs> <laughs> Our group is so awkward. I had called you. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's fine. No other public comment or other things? All right, should we do the next meeting on January 12th? I move we adjourn. Second. I second. Done. Hey, Grace. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Good to see you. Hey, buddy. Happy Good holidays. holidays. All right. And happy holidays, Bye. guys. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Now Bye. we wait again. <laughs> <laughs>